Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. I've decided to do a supplementary video I hadn't been originally intending to do, but I think it will be useful for people to see the process by which we can go from sentences in the English language to sentences in the Aristotelian syllogistic language that we defined in the previous video. So I've set up a couple of sentences already. So let's share the screen so that you can see them. So we've got two different groups of sentences here. The first group of four, every human is an animal, some donut is not a vegetable, no peas are donuts, some cats are not angels. These are, some of them are true sentences, some of them are actually, all of those look like they're true sentences. Truth doesn't matter here because we're only interested in doing translations. Faced with English language sentences like this, the first thing that you want to do is identify what the categorimatic terms are. So what we have is, we have human, we have animal, we have donut, we have vegetable, we have pea, we have donut again, we have cat. Oh, and then we have angels and we've got both angels and animals. I'm going to use N for angel rather than A so that we're not duplicating our letters. Now you'll notice that sometimes we have um, the plural, sometimes we have the singular, that doesn't really matter at the level of translating from English into symbolic logic. We just need a letter that represents either the singular or the plural form. Each of these is already in the form of kind of the standard, i.e. subject first, predicate second, uh, English language representation of a categorical proposition. So translating these into a term language that consists of the categorimatic terms. We have A, C, D, P, N, and V. Translating each one of these sentences is straightforward. So animal belongs to all human. Vegetable does not belong to some donut. Donut belongs to no P and angel does not belong to some cat. So there we have a straightforward translation by identifying the categorimatic terms, identifying the structure of the categorical proposition, and then making sure that we swap the order from the standard kind of English language grammar into the grammar of the Aristotelian term logic. That's easy. When you have sentences that are already in the right sort of form, translating them is just a matter of identifying appropriate letters for each of the categorimatic terms. But let's look at the set of six that we have. All peas are vegetables, not all students run. Some students watch all the videos, some cat runs, some farmer doesn't own a donkey, all gobinated bordures must have good contrast. Now, some of these sentences, again, some are true, some are false, some of them you might not even know what the words involved mean, but again, none of that matters. What we want to do when we're doing our translating is to, again, identify the things that are the categorimatic terms, even if you don't know what those terms mean, and construct the language from them. So one thing to notice here is that Sometimes it's easy to see what the categorimatic terms are. So we've got P and V for peas and vegetables. We have S here for students. We've got the same S here. We've got C for cat, F for farmer. This is a complex categorimatic term, but we can kind of think of it, even though it's two words in English, we can think of it as a single unit. So we'll just call that G. But now we run into some questions about what, particularly with the predicates, what are the terms, what are the categorimatic terms being used in the predicates? We also have questions about what are the structures of these sentences, because these don't all match the basic format that we first provided. However, what I'm going to demonstrate is that they can all be converted into something that does have the structure of a categorimatic proposition. So the first one, let me, can I move it? Can I move it? Sort of. The first sentence 
is easy because we can go from all peas are vegetables to every pea is a vegetable. And that has the nice format of an English language categorimatic sentence. Now, the second one has a negation, not, and then all students run. All students run looks like it should be a universal affirmative. However, it doesn't have the every X is a Y structure. So we would need to do something to get to that structure. So for the time being, let's just bracket that not. We'll come back to talk about what it should be. But instead, what we can say is that every student is a thing that runs. So now we have, again, kind of ignoring the not, we've got something that looks much more like a categorical proposition. So in that case, we can say that our, wait, come on. Ooh, God, that isn't what I wanted. Um, try this again. So not all students run. Yes, there we go. Let's just say R stands for a thing that runs. Now this is a technique that you can use for pretty much any subject predicate sentence that you come across in English. So some students watch all the videos. Well, this is just going to be some student is a thing that watches all, watches all the videos. Or some cat runs, some cat is a running thing or a thing that runs. Some farmer doesn't own a donkey. Some farmer is not a, well, we could say thing that owns a donkey, but perhaps somewhat nicer in English is just not an owner of a donkey. And then all gobinated bordures are things that must have good contrasts. So anytime that you have a predicate or a verb in English, that doesn't involve the being verb is, you can always kind of substantivize it into a thing which is or a thing which does. Now we are in a position where we can actually completely identify the term language that we want to use to translate these. So P for P, V for vegetable, S for student, R for things that run, We've got S again here. How about W for watches all the videos? Cat, and then ah, I should have used a thing that runs and a running thing. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't have used both versions of that. I didn't realize. Anyway, we'll represent them both with the same categorimatic term because they're really picking out the same property. They're just trivial variants in English. These variants don't matter at the level of logic. Then we have our farmer, and then we have our donkey owner, our gobinated bordure, and let's use, we haven't, um, let's use, ah. Let's use that symbol, OC, for good contrast. Anyway, once we have these letters, then it's just a matter of identifying the categorical structure of each of these. So number one is again a universal affirmative. So we have V, A, P. Number two, we'll, I'll bracket that for now. We'll come back to that, that tricky little knot. Then we have that student, you know, the thing that watches all videos is something that belongs to some student. Running thing is something that belongs to some cat. Owner of a donkey is something that does not belong to some farmer. And then our strange symbol here. When in doubt, you can always make up your own symbols if you don't have enough letters. So all of these things are, uh, sorry, good contrast is something that belongs to all abonnated borders. Again, you don't need to know what these things are to be able to represent them in the formal language. Now let's come back to number two. Not every student is a thing that runs. 
this is something where it seems like we should be able to represent this because if it's not the case that every student is a thing that runs, well, then it has to be the case that some student is a thing that doesn't run. So I'm going to kind of put this in here, run O S. So some student is a thing that doesn't run. This is what we would like to be able to formalize it as. And we would like to be able to formalize it as this because it has the same meaning. Meaning doesn't come inherently to the structures of the sentences. Our term language just tells us what are the words we have to work with? How can we combine them into propositions and arguments? Meaning is the next step of the game. How are we able to say that not every student is a thing that runs means the same thing as some student is not a thing that runs. And that, my friends, is going to be the topic of the next video. So check back. See you then. Cheers.